name is Corey. Hi, Corey. Thanks, Owen. And I work in a drum factory. I have a wife, two kids, and a dog. One day my boss said to me, she said, Corey. I said, yeah. Are you busy? I said, nah. She said, so hit the cymbals with your left foot. Hi, my name is Corey. And I work in a drum factory. I have a wife, two kids, and a dog. One day my boss said to me, she said, Corey. I said, yeah. Are you busy? I said, nah. She said, so hit the tambourine with your right foot. Hi, my name is Corey. And I work in a drum factory. I have a wife, two kids, and a dog. One day my boss said to me, she said, Corey? I said, yeah. Are you busy? I said, nah. She said, so hit the drum with your left hand. Hi, my name is Corey. And I work in a drum factory. I have a wife, two kids, and a dog. One day my boss said to me, she said, Corey? I said, yeah. Are you busy? I said, nah. She said, so hit the blocks with your right hand. Hi, my name is Corey. And I work in a drum factory. I have a wife, two kids, and a dog. One day my boss said to me, she said, Corey? I said, yeah. Are you busy? I said, nah. She said, so hit the crasher with your right hand. Incredibly awesome and currently uh, without fur dog. If she makes an entrance here, you will see a poodle without fur. It's uh, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny indeed. So I know you guys have heard this story before, unless it's your first time joining us. But if this is not your first time, um, then yes, you know my name is Corey. You know I don't actually work in a drum factory. That is a metaphor for my garage where I come up with these crazy cool stories that I've been playing for you. And it's part of something I do called percussive storytelling where I play percussion instruments because of this. I know I've said this to some of you, but I have to go over it every time. This is the magic stick. Or and the stick goes. And then the stick goes. And then you get sound. Anything you hit with something else that make a sound is a percussion instrument. So the crasher, percussion instrument. The table, percussion instrument. The fish tape, percussion instrument. Here we go. My head. 
Ooh. Definitely a percussion instrument. But as you heard in this first story called Drum Factory, I don't just tell the stories. Um, I play instruments and tell stories all at the same time, and that's what makes what I do called percussive storytelling. So this is something I've been doing every Monday. This is, I don't even remember. The fourth one, third one, fourth, fifth, 20th, 80th, I'm not even, even sure. But it's been a lot of fun. Um, people have been joining in from all over the world. So far, five continents. People from five continents have watched, and that's really cool. And so today I have three more stories for you that uh, you haven't heard so far, including one that no one has heard. Ha, ha, ha. And as I move, I'm going to be telling jokes. Yes. And I'll be teaching you some more about the instruments because uh, I've had a lot of requests and a lot of things about uh, just where do you get the instruments? What are the instruments? And I think it's something that myself, being a professional percussionist, might take for granted, just having all of these instruments around. So first, we need to start with uh, a couple jokes, because it's important. OK, here we go. Why did Timmy throw the clock out the window? Say why. Why? He wanted to see if time could fly. Okay, uh, here's more of a riddle. What gets wet while it dries? Ooh. Zoe, do you know this one? Mm. You're right. A towel. a towel, very good. And I'll leave you with one more before going on here. Uh, why did the bed wear a disguise? It was undercover. Oh, good stuff, good stuff. All right, so I'm going to move on to this next story. But before I do that, I'm going to announce the winners last week of the art competition. So I've been having these different competitions. The first week was the Tiki Tiki Tembo Challenge. Last week was create a piece of work uh, or a work of art about the lost bicycle. And I had a... a some really cool entries. In fact, if you look on that YouTube link, the cover of that is a recycled bicycle that was made out from uh, Zach and Isabel in Maryland. And they were also the ones who did that six and a half minute version of Tiki Tiki Tembo. So they are crushing it in Maryland. Oh yeah. Um, but also I had another winner from Tennessee, the great state of Tennessee. We had Zach and Gideon. Woo! Everybody cheer? No, no cheer. Everyone's Woo! cheering while eating an apple. Yes, Zach and Gideon, you guys win a CD of your choice or book of your choice. So way to go. And now I'm going to move on to this next story. Um, this one is a pretty new one for me. I wrote it this last year and have performed it only a handful of times. It is called It Could Always Be Worse. Oh, yeah. Um, this story is an old Yiddish folktale and brief history lesson there. So it's kind of from Eastern Europe. Uh, and the story sets this farmer, poor farmer, and this rabbi. And in the sense of the rabbi, if you guys know what a rabbi is, it's traditionally a leader of a Jewish synagogue or the Jewish religion. But in this story, the rabbi is more like the mayor of the town. Think of it that way. So... Um, if you go to an elementary school, the mayor of your school would be the principal. So Principal Rickard, if you're watching, you're now the mayor. Congratulations. Uh, and in this story, this farmer discovers that things could always be worse. So I hope you enjoy. Long, long ago, a poor farmer lived with his wife, six children, and dog in a small one-room hut. The hut was so small that the farmer and his wife often argued. The children fought, and the dog cried. When the farmer could take it no longer, he raced to the rabbi for help. Rabbi, he said, life in my hut couldn't be worse. Me, my wife, six children, and dog 
are too cramped with all the yelling, fighting, and crying. I can't hear myself think. Please help. Well, the rabbi listened and thought, and then she said, tell me, dear farmer, do you have any chickens? Why, yes, said the farmer. I have chickens, a rooster, and a goose. Great, said the rabbi. Go home and bring the chickens, rooster, and goose into your hut to live with you, your wife, six children, and dog. Well, the farmer was a bit surprised, but said, yes, rabbi, and he sprinted home to bring the chickens, rooster, and goose into the hut to live. Well, weeks went by and life in the hut was worse than before. Now with the yelling, fighting, and crying, there was clucking, crowing, and talking. When the farmer could take it no longer, he raced back to the rabbi for help. Rabbi, he cried, life in my hut couldn't be worse. Now with the yelling, fighting, crying, there's clucking, crowing, and honking. Please help. Well, the rabbi listened and thought, and then she said, tell me, dear farmer, do you have any goats? Why, yes, I do, said the farmer. I have one goat. Perfect, said the rabbi. Go home and bring the goat into the hut to live with you, your wife, six children, dog, chicken, rooster, and goose. The farmer was very confused and said, yes, rabbi. And he ran home to bring the goat into the hut to live. Well, weeks went by and life in the hut was worse than before. Now with the yelling, fighting, crying, clucking, crowing, and honking, there was a goat with huge horns knocking everything on the ground. When the farmer could take it no longer, he raced back to the rabbi for help. Rabbi, he yelled. Life in my hut couldn't be worse. Now with the yelling, fighting, crying, clucking, crowing, and honking, there is a goat with huge horns knocking everything on the ground. Please help. Well, the rabbi listened and thought. And then she said, tell me, dear farmer, do you have any cows? Why, yes, I do, said the farmer. I have one very large cow. Excellent, said the rabbi. Go home and bring the cow into the hut to live with you, your wife, six children, dog, chicken, rooster, goose, and goat. Well, the farmer was completely bewildered, but said, yes, rabbi. And he walked home to bring the cow into the hut to live. life in the hut was worse than before. Now with the yelling, fighting, crying, clucking, crowing, and honking, there was a goat with huge horns knocking everything on the ground, and a cow with heavy hooves trampling everything. When the farmer could take it no longer, he raced back to the rabbi for help. Rabbi, he screamed, life in my hut couldn't be worse. Now with the yelling, fighting, 
crying, clucking, crowing, and honking. There is a goat with huge horns knocking everything on the ground, and a cow with heavy hooves trampling everything. And she said, Dear farmer, go home and let all the animals out of your hut. Yes, Rabbi, the farmer said excitedly as he hurried home to let out the chickens, rooster, goose, goat, and cow. Well, that night, the farmer, his wife, six children, and dog all slept peacefully. There was no yelling. No crying, no fighting, no clucking, no crowing, and no honking. There was no goat with huge horns knocking everything on the ground, and no cow with heavy bones trampling everything. There was plenty of room for everyone. Well, the next day, the farmer raced back to the rabbi and said, Rabbi! You have made life so sweet with just me, my wife, six children, and dog. In the hut, I am so peaceful and content. Moral of the story, appreciate what you have. As things could always be worse. The end. There you go. That is, it could always be worse. A funny story. It's been around for a long time. A lot of great versions out there. That's kind of my spin on this old classic. Um, see some text messages coming in. And what I'd love for you guys to do is please send questions. There's an email there. There's a phone number there. And if you want some shout outs, like I can just shout out your name. Like, Zoe! See, I just did it. That's a shout out. Or I can say, Marcello! Hi, Marcello. Hi, Georgia. Hi, Emilia. And it's Emilia. I don't want, I don't want Nana or Carla's mom to get mad at me. That's grandma, not my grandma. I said Emilia once and I got in trouble. Um, Emilia. Hi, Marcello. I think you're doing a crazy dance. I saw you in a talent show and it was Awesome. Great job, buddy. Um, so let's see here. I want to go over these instruments, and then I'll take a couple of questions, and we'll go from there. So some of these instruments might look familiar. So we have a lot of blocks of wood. And I really like to use these because they all have different pitches. So a lot of people say that percussion is unpitched meaning it's not like a saxophone or a clarinet or a piano or a violin or a singing voice where you can hear those beautiful notes, right? And I disagree with that because I find that all of these instruments have a pitch. It's just how you decide to arrange them. So if you listen to my wood instruments, you'll hear that there are definitely pitches. Da, 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 da. And then, so you can hear that there's a difference. Some are higher, some are lower. The same is true of my metal instruments. So there are a lot of different kinds of cowbells here. I really like cowbells. Yes, the skit from Saturday Night Live is completely accurate. All percussionists love cowbells, and we can't get enough of them. So these... Again, they're, they're called non-pitched or unpitched, but if you listen, you can hear there's clearly a pitch coming from the instruments. Um, we have my tambourines, my cymbal, these cool temple bowls here. Oh, so nice. 
very meditative and calming. And then the gongs over here. Remember, if you've been watching, you know this is my favorite instrument. Good old opera gong from China. And a bigger one. Yeah. And let's see here. Um, castanets. And when you put them together, the reason why I compose the way I do for these stories is I take these melodies from the different instruments and try to put them together. So that you can hear a little bit of a melodic um, effect, even though these are non-pitched. So I will stop there on describing these instruments um, and see if there are any questions. Please go ahead and send your questions in. I need it. If you have one, wow, my email's there. Um, and while you do that, I'm going to tell a couple more jokes. Or you want to hear some jokes? You're listening? Oh, here are my jokes. OK. Why did the baseball player go to jail? Why? Why? Well, I think so. He stole second base. <laughs> okay. Um, what? No, this, this is one of my favorites. What do you call a fairy who doesn't take a bath? What? Stinker Bell. Ah, so good. Such a good one. Um, I have a question here that says, why did you choose percussion rather than, say, clarinet or cello or other instruments? Well, I started on piano. Uh, I think I was in second grade. And then in middle school or thereabouts, I, I started playing percussion. And... You know, the honest truth is, boy, I think there are a few reasons, none of them poetic at all. Like, it was like, there was no reason that I was, I was drawn to the instrument. It spoke to me. I woke up one day, I must play percussion. Um, I'm pretty sure it was because I didn't want to play an instrument where I'd use my breath because I had asthma. And... Some teachers said my arms weren't long enough to play viola or cello, and I didn't want to play violin. So somehow I ended up in the back of the orchestra or band playing drums and never stopped playing. So that's that one. Um, all right, so I'm going to shift over here to another story. Zoe will work the machine here. Look at that tech helmet. And then can you... Down to actually, yeah, move it even more that way. I think I put it in the wrong spot. Hello, everyone. Extreme close up. Okay. Can you put it down even further? They can see this cool drum. Yes. Thank you, Zoe. All right. So, this next story is called Harumph. Might seem like a very strange name for a story because it is a pretty strange name for a story, but it is about. How the camel got its hump. Because, um, in a non scientific description here that is completely made up, a long time ago, camels didn't have humps until this story happened, and then now they have humps. Um, this, these stories, though, are about how animals got their different characteristics. They're told in many different cultures. Um, they're sort of nature creation stories about how animals developed certain traits. And Rudyard Kipling, a British author, made these stories kind of famous in a, in a collection called the Just So Stories. And these are great kid stories about how the elephant got its trunk, how the leopard got its spots, how the uh, rhinoceros got its skin, like the, the armor or the thick skin. And, or wrinkled skin. And then this one, how the camel got its hump. So I rewrote the story to be uh, in sort of a rhyme version, just because I have a lot of stories that are more lyrical, that I just sort of tell. And then I wanted to put something in a bit of a beat. So I decided to use this drum, 
um, beautiful drum called a Zarb, Z-A-R-B. And it's a goblet drum from the Middle East and sort of around the area where you would find camels. So I thought, hey, that kind of worked. And what's really cool about this drum is what can happen to the pitch. So I'm not playing it traditionally. Traditionally, you play it up here. But I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing to the drum. So as I hit it, if I push into the drum head, pitch can go up. Oh yeah, it's a cool drum. Um, and so I thought I'd use this drum to tell the silly story about how the camel got its hump. Straight back, 
knee into rise, rise, and rise. He jumped off the stump and just as he rose, the stump disappeared right under his toes. Startled and scared, the camel yelled, hump. And just like that, he had his own bump. The gin said, now camel, this hump is for you to catch up on work you're too lazy to do. You see, my friend, this hump's filled with water. You can work for three days in the desert without fodder. So up you go, camel, now don't be a run. For you are the recipient of a brand new That is the camel's hump, otherwise known as harumph. Just lift that up a little bit, so thank you. I'm gonna get my iPad, see if I have any questions here. All right. Okay. You guys having fun yet? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna give you guys before the last story, which is a funny one, or and you're going to want to see this one, buddy. I have a couple more jokes, and I'm going to give you guys a challenge for next week. This challenge is a little bit different of a challenge. It's uh, not related to my stories. It's related to us being stuck indoors and a little bit outdoors when we can. But what I was going to challenge my kids for this week and work together is to find rocks and kids are really good at finding rocks. Uh, I've been finding them in the laundry for years. Yeah, so he's laughing. I love this rock, it's my friend. I'll name him Rocky. Coincidentally, your last name. Rocky. Um, I want you guys to find rocks, paint them. You guys like to paint too. With like positive messages or hearts or rainbows or whatever, and then put them around your neighborhood. Put them on people's driveways, front porches, Try to send a message of positivity to people in your on your street. This is a time where we all just can do what we can. And I figured an arts and crafts project using paint and rocks. Definitely, that's like speaking a kid's language right there. Please paint these rocks. Please put them on someone's front porch. Not through the window. Okay, no rocks through windows. Yes, that's right. Uh -huh. No. Um, but please do that. Take a picture, send it to me via Facebook, Instagram, the email, the text, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you some cool entries, I hope, and then pick a winner. And you guys can get a free book or album of your choice. So a couple more jokes before this final story. Um, let's see here. Just have to move one thing. This is the new one, buddy. I think I'm going to like it. You think you're going to like it? I can tell. I think you're going to like it. All right. Let's see. I put this here. I'm going to put this here. And now I'm going to tell you a couple jokes. Ready, buddy? Yeah. Okay. Here come the jokes. And by the way, if you guys have any questions or want to shout out or anything like that, you have to send me a message because I don't know if you're there. Uh, Oren's doing a, a walk on. All right, stay there, bud. Okay, let's see here. Why did the hamburger always lose the race? Why? It could never catch up. Oh. oh. Uh, this one is more for the adults who have a historical reference. What is green and can sing? Elvis Parsley. Oh, come on. Okay, and then one of my favorite ones, because I always have to end with some sort of booger joke. Um, 
Why was the nose sad? Say why. Why? why? I'm glad you asked. It was tired of getting picked on. Uh, I can't think of Weber wants a shout out. Weber! Hi, Weber. Can we all say Weber on the count of three? One, two, three. Weber. Hi, Weber! How are you doing, bud? I assume you're rolling around right now. Like, ah! Um, let's see here. Anyone else want a shout out? Jay Marcello. I gave my parents. My parents are watching. On the other side of the country. Oren's watching. Also, Weber wants to give a shout out back to Oren and Zoe. So. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Oren. Weber says hi. Yay! Look at that. Ah! All right, if you want to ask any other questions or want me to give some sort of shout out, you can do that while I play this next story. And this is the premiere of this story, meaning I've, I haven't done this for anyone. Um, yeah, so that's kind of cool. This story will be remarkably similar to one that you've heard me tell many times. Tiki Tiki Timbo. Now in Tiki Tiki Timbo, the whole point of the story or, or plot of the story is that boy falls into the well because his name is too long. long. Correct, his name is too long. So because his name is too long, he gets trapped in this, or he falls in this well and it's it takes a long time for them to get him out. Well, this story, Tiki Tiki Timbo, is an old Chinese folk tale that's been around for close to uh, 2,000 years or so. But there's another version that I found in the United States of America. Um, we have a very rich history of folk music in this country, specifically from the Appalachian area, if you know where the Appalachian Trail is, between like Tennessee, all the way up to West Virginia, the mountain, or the, yeah. You can look on the map for that. And this version of Tiki Tiki Timbo found its way there and was, was kind of changed and amended to be Eddie Kucha Kacha. Okay? Eddie. So the story, I'm calling it Eddie. The name is Eddie Kucha Kacha Kama Toasted Nea Toasted Noka Sama Kama Wacky Brown. Okay, right, so we had Tiki Tiki Tembo, Nosa Rimbo, Charibari Richie, Pipberry Pimbo. And now we have Eddie Kucha Kacha Kama Tosa Nana Tosa Noka Sama Kama Wacky Brown. So apparently, I really like long names and wells. As this story involves the same thing, where Eddie falls into the well, so people have to help him out. And this is just my funny version of telling this quick and hilarious story. So this is the first time I've done it. I told you before, last time when I did Peacock, which was the first time I had done, ever done that story, that I typically practice these stories close to 100 times before playing them in public. And I don't consider this public, sort of. But at any rate, um, I might mess it up. You never know. This will be good for me. And so what I really need, just like people did for Peacock, is send me ideas for this story or things that maybe worked or didn't work and I can change it from there. So, here's a little story about a boy named Eddie Kucha Kacha Kama Tosta Nana Tosta Noka Sama Kama Wacky Brown. Who? Eddie Kucha Kacha Kama Tosta Nana Tosta Noka Sama Kama Wacky Brown. Who fell into the well, fell into the well. Fell into the deep, dark well. Susie Jones, looking in the barn, saw him fall and ran to tell her ma that Eddie Kucha Kacha Kama Tosta Nana Tosta Noka Sama Kama Wacky Brown. Who? Eddie Kucha Kacha Kama Tosta Nana Tosta Noka Sama Kama Wacky Brown. Fell into the well. Fell into the well. Fell into the deep, dark well. Mrs. Jones, making crackling who? Eddie Kucha Kacha Kama Tosta Nana Tosta Noka Sama Kama Wacky Brown. Fell into the well, fell into the well, fell into the deep dark well. Old Farmer Jones, planting in the sun, sent it to the nearest town to tell everyone that Eddie Kucha Kacha Kama Tosta Nana Tosta Noka Sama Kama Wacky Brown. Who? Eddie 
do the well. Fell into the well. Fell into the deep or well. To the well, everybody ran. For me, no one chance. And let me not get so that any kitchen you got to get a toast and then a toast and you'll get on a pillow, wacky brown. Who? Any kitchen you got to get a toast and then a toast and you'll get on a pillow, wacky brown. Climb out of the well. Climb out of the well. Climb out of the deep, dark well. For three long weeks, he stayed in bed. And from that day on, he was known as Ed. Not Eddie Cook to catch a camera, toast and then a toast and milk to stand like him a wacky brown. Who? Eddie Cook to catch a camera, toast and then a toast and milk to stand like him a wacky brown. Who? Eddie Cook to catch a camera, toast and then a toast and milk to stand like him a wacky brown. Oh, there you go. What do you think, Warren? Wow! It's a long name. Tiki Tiki Timbo, Nosa, Rimbo, Chubber, Richie, Pick, Ray, Pimbo. And Eddie Kucha catch a camel toast and then a toast and milk a Santa camel wacky brown. Um, the instruments for this, in case you are wondering what in the world this is, um, this here is a washboard. Like they used to use to wash your clothes. However, it gets a really, really awesome sound. And what I decided to do was treat the name kind of like I was typing it on a typewriter. So, Eddie Kuchik has a camera toasted and a toasted note I see on the camera, wacky brown. And then you know how you get to the end of the line on a typewriter and you get the ding? And then you have to whoosh, swing it back. Just like that. Eddie Kuchik has a camera toasted and a toasted note I see on the camera, wacky brown. Ding! That was kind of, I don't know why that. I did that, but I just thought it would be funny. And if you are wondering what a typewriter is, um, then go to a museum. It's an antique, it's a relic. Actually, they're wonderful. Typewriters are great. We have one here, we should use it more, it's so cool. Um, the other instruments in this are a frying pan, without a handle. Um, a few of these, Look, I don't know what they look like, but they're blocks. And then three different tiny little bells. And the ding right here. Ah, it's a satisfying ding. And this thing that I, uh, it's, um, how do I describe this guy? It's, um, a metal sculpture instrument made by a guy named Pete Engelhart. It's used more uh, for recordings, so I use it a lot for recording for various projects. Pretty cool instrument. Then I had the cymbals going over here. So that is Eddie Kucha Kacha Kamatosa Nanatosa Noka Samba Camel Wacky Brown. Let's see here. What is a typewriter? That is really, really funny, Auntie Bibi. What is a typewriter? Exactly. It's, you know, it's an ancient computer. Nana pop up, shout out back to Zoe and Oren. Boom! All right, so if you guys have any questions, now is the time. Otherwise, we are going to go about our day because we're so busy. I mean, oh my gosh. I mean, there's just so many things to do from walking over there, to walking over there, to staring up there, to tickling my kids, yeah, to an ice cream party later. Yes, ice cream parties rule. Um, as usual, thank you for checking this out. Thank you for sharing. Um, it's just a lot of fun to do. I'll be back here next Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific, same exact time. Is it same bat channel? Same, it's a Batman reference. Old Batman reference. Um, and please take a picture of you painting some rocks, putting them around, spreading some cheer. You know, that's what we need to do. So thank you very much, guys. Have a wonderful week. And I will virtually see you next Monday.